Yo, 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 welcome guys, welcome back to another amazing, amazing, this one is going to be hot, a tutorial that most people have requested that I do, so, but I'm going to show you how to, this, this topic is like the most, seems like the most difficult topic, the most difficult thing to do, but it's actually the simplest out of everything, but the most misunderstood, understand, so the, before you, before we talk about mastering, 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 mastering. Before you master, you have to understand the term mastering. So I, I don't like to make things very complicated for those who have watched my previous videos. And if you haven't, just try to check out the channel and watch other videos. And please try to subscribe and um, click the bell notification button so that you get to know when I post new and amazing stuff. Because you guys know and I like to make my stuff very, very simple and straightforward for someone to pick up easily. So, mastering. Now, after the mix of a song is done, which the mix is the most important, actually. If you have a clean mix, you're not going to do magic in the mastering. You understand? So, don't, don't see mastering as your escape route where you just do everything. Get the mix done. Then if you, don't, if you feel something is wrong in the mix, go back to the mix, fix the mix, then come back. Mastering is just like a... The polishing, the finishing, finishing touch, yeah, the finishing touch you do to a sound so that you make it two things to make it sound at the same level, the same average loudness. So that when you play a professional record and play your own song, then you don't feel that oh, this thing is low or for the gain, for the volume, firstly, and secondly, for it to translate well in any speaker you play it in, you can play it in your car, you can play it in your Bluetooth, you can play it in your studio monitor, you can play it through your phone so that your sound comes out good or averagely good in every sound system you play. So that's the reason why we do mastering. So mastering, and I see a lot of people when they come to master, they they put so much um, plugins, they put EQ, they put this, they put that, feeling that you just need all those stuff. No. Mastering it. For me, that's my own concept. Everyone has his own own. Mastering, to me, has two sets of plugins. That's what I call it. I, I divided it into, into the primary plugins and the secondary plugins. So, I'm going to be doing much talking because it's in the talking you have to understand first before you start hearing sounds. The primary plugins are just two two plugins you use like 99% of the time you, you master. First, the most important is the EQ and your limiter. The EQ and your limiter. 99% of the time on your master boss, you have to use, those are the primary um, plugins. Sometimes you see a master engineer, a master with just EQ and a limiter. So I see a lot of people just throwing in exciter, throw this one, throw it, it, those things are not necessary unless the mix needs it. Unless there's a sound you're looking for and it needs it. So then you start going into the secondary plugins, which are the exciter, the saturators and um, compressors and the rest of that. So enough of the talking, I'm going to show you, this is actually a song, my song, that I, I dropped a while ago. So I'm going to be using it for the sake of this tutorial. So this this song is called Contact. Yeah, this is how it sounds. Now this is my screen. This is how it sounds without the mastering. So now I'm going to bring in all my plugin. I'm going to activate the master that I've done. Then you see, you're definitely going to hear the difference. Playboy. 
Yeah, my baby, give me that tea, baby, yo oh. Now you could instantly hear the increment in the loudness because most times people, once a sound is loud, the ear perceives it as better. So don't be fooled by loudness. You understand? Ma mastering is not just about loudness. But one, once a sound is louder, your ear will believe that it's better. So don't, don't fall for that trick. So I actually master with, in FL, I can master anywhere, but I prefer, is a choice. There's no best plug, there's no best DW. It's about the one you like, you are comfortable in, in its environment. So I, I used to master elsewhere, but I started mastering in FL a few months ago, actually. Not up to two months now, uh, but I still use the same. I use Ozone, Ozone 9. I have my reasons for using Ozone 9 because it's an amazing plug and has this, um, this plugin called the tone shaper where you can actually see your bands i'm going I'm, 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 i might be making a tutorial on that if about in later in this video i will show you what i use that plugin for then but let's just go so now this is ozone 9 this is ozone 9 now i'm going to bypass every guy all these plugins here i'm going to bypass all of them so there is no set rule there is no set rule the first thing you want to do is you listen to the sound from the beginning to the end most times it's good to have analyzers analyze a professional song that you feel that sounds in the same bracket with this the particular song you want to mix it's always good to reference reference even our professional guides top guys they always reference so you have to have a song a mastered and professional sound you like the mix, you like the master, and then you reference with that sound. So you use your analyzers and maybe look at how a song is analyzed. That particular song is analyzed with analyzer. Then you now tend to master your song with what you've seen. So this guy, let me just bring it up immediately. This guy, tonal balance, tonal balance control. So this is what I use. I always observe this guy once I'm playing my sound. Okay, now if you if you watch here, watch here. I've oh my, I, I wrote it Afro brat. I wanted to write Afro beat actually. Now these are this plugin doesn't affect your sound, but you might just use any any um um what is it called analyzer. You have there are free analyzers online where you can download. But I use this. It comes with ozone. Ozone is just a mastering plugin. So I use this guy. I now have sampled like many Afrobeat sounds, professional sound. Then I sampled it with this guy. Then he gave me this graph. Gave me this graph here. These graphs for the lows, the mid, the low mid, the high mid, and the high. So the, he gave me, he said, I mean, so whenever I'm mastering a song, there are lines that are going to appear in each of these bands. Then I try to make sure I stay in those bands. It's like a visual guide for me. Once I'm also listening to my monitors, understand? It doesn't change your sound. Don't for, don't hope on it all the time. But just use it as a visual guide to guide you. It makes your work easier. But even if you don't have it, you can still master your sound. I'm just showing the stuff I use because I don't like hiding stuff. So once you open it up, I've saved a, a, a preset analyzer for myself. If you, in case you're doing country music, hip hop, once you just click it, you see the graph changes and then now makes you, you now master your song so that your lines will fall. So once I play a song, you see those lines. You see this line. Now those lines are the lines I, I was I used to watch whenever I'm mastering. So, but let me just put it off uh, you know, for the sake of those who don't have it, so I won't confuse you the, the more. Uh, delete it. So the first thing I did in this sound, because first of all I looked at the waveform, looked at the waveform. There is no the dynamic range is not much. Those are the first things you look at your your wave file. The dynamic is different between the peak and the low in the waveform as you can see so it was it was almost even like there's no much dynamic difference so but just for these peaks 
this part that came out so loud so I, that was the reason why I, I used a compressor first to make all the sounds feel like almost even but I'm not compressing it much and master then you do little you do little little I said <laughs> little because once you do extreme EQ cut extreme compression then you're getting it wrong mastering is about the subtle movement you do those are the important stuff so I used uh, normally I was supposed to divide you can divide this um, what's it called this compressor into different amount of bands if you can create eight bands you can um you know complete it's very flexible but i didn't divide it i just compressed everything together so what i what i was doing i was using a ratio of two to one then attack four and a very slow um fast release i didn't want to compress more but i just wanted to you know just take out something from the then i look at what it's doing let me let me get the song to a louder part where yeah, the sound is loud. Let me show you actually the compression. <coughs> when when the kick comes I know it was the kick that was giving me that little bit of dynamic difference. So I was now taking down the kick just a little. Then I, I also did I also did a compensation in volume for the volume lost. I saw I was losing about 2 dB if you watch. About 2 dB. So I just had to gain it up to 2 dB again so that I'll make up for the gain lost. So I still want to maintain the same volume but the next thing i did was an eq so now this was where i did normally i don't do this much but i was listening for sounds and i was also watching my analyzer so what i did i had i had to take down <coughs> the low frequency because it was like it was crossing the threshold of those bars that you saw in my analyzer and if it crosses a certain threshold once you play it in some speakers that have extreme bass response they're going to like boom, 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 distort the whole stuff then the, the low frequency will swallow all the frequency then you hardly hear um, or you play it in speakers that are weak yeah they're going to like <laughs> distort everywhere so that's why we have to pay attention to your lows first because it can it can mess up the whole stuff understand this is the frequency i was taking down just let's, let me solo that particular band And and I I'll have to suggest at this point you have to use your spe your speakers your monitors your ear your headset so you could hear this low frequency so that was around 98 hertz very low but it was overriding my speakers and I didn't like it so I had to take it down like not even up to a dB like minus 0 0.9 dB I had to put it down a little bit because I was having so much override in the bass the kick and the bass they were coming up so hard <laughs> so. That was it. So I, and I had to bring it down. So and this other guy, we are the low, the low mid, and the vocal, the low mid of the vocal was actually I think they were clashing here. They normally clash at this 250 uh, between that area. So I just had to take it down. And if you watch, don't don't be fooled by this drastic movement you see on the on the EQ. They are actually subtle movement. Just watch minus 0 0.6, not even up to a dB reduction. So. Now this is the frequency I was taking out. I didn't, I didn't like that that sound. It was, it was giving me one kind of, and I, and I don't like it. So normally, there's also um, another problem area around the 400 to 600 hertz. That there's always a problem, but I didn't find it in this particular mix. That's why the every mix is not the same. You listen for the stuff that are disturbing you, then you take them out before you start adding the sweet sides. You first of all remove the annoying parts then. So I was now adding a lot of in the in the mid range, I was adding some presence so that so that when you play it in your phone, you're still going to because I was not that mid range is is the frequency where your phone 
your laptop speakers can represent very well so i just had to add like 0 0.2 db gain on that in case you play it on those devices so now when you're mastering you're not considering every device understand so i now had to this is the frequency i was i just gained a little bit so you understand now you see that the process of mastering is about you think about the the world where your song is going to be played then you now compensate for those guys so this guy this guy was where the vocal was actually present in the in this um 3700 and something hertz so i i, I don't i normally i didn't want to boost it but i just gave you like a 0 0.1 boost so that in case in case something happens you play it in a speaker that doesn't have enough enough of high representation then this guy might just do something but the sound was okay already but i just had to just give it that but i was not giving it like a high shelf from this around 8k that this presence makes makes this the 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 mix to shine out you know give you that crisp that clear i see a lot of people just boost boosting so that you get a clean mix no you don't, you don't get any wrong so now this is the other the other frequency i, I skipped so i'm going to bypass you naturally at this point you shouldn't hear any difference like any much difference now the difference is going to be coming when you start adding your maximizer or your limiter understand then that is when this the importance of these two steps is done will not come in play because when you start things start getting loud you are also boosting problem areas so and everything is going to add up and mess up the whole mix so that's why we first of all take away some stuff that are not helping the sound so bypass you actually got a little bit cleaner if you have the ear you have to train your ear to hear sounds understand then the next thing i did this is another important stuff i like to do this is where I do like a dynamic EQ. Dynamic EQ, I see a lot of people using static EQ. Once you just cut a, a frequency range, then that place stays cut all through the sound. But that's not the case for a dynamic EQ. A dynamic EQ, what it does is very important. And I, I don't see a lot of people using dynamic EQ. Because what, you, what it does is that, okay, I want to cut away um, a particular band, but I don't want it to stay cut all the time. I want it to eq once the sound starts getting a little bit too loud in that area so the eq will now start activating by itself understand so i was taking away this guy it was a little bit too rumbling for me because once the sound start getting so hot that place is going to add up frequencies and add up frequencies and the thing is going to start giving it one kind of muddy sound and this is that annoying frequency I talked about, the 600 hertz, where you find a lot of boxy kind of voices or sound. You see, you now start getting all kind of boxy sound, and those places, once you start adding your limiter, those things are, are not going to sound so present. So we have to first of all take care of them before we go into add to add the spice which is the limiter and this other place we had the vocal and i think the one of the percussion sound was was clashing they were coming so hard so i wondered if anytime the vocal and that um the percussion or the stick instrument hits the same time the eq will activate and bring it down a little a little not much like a little i don't use this all the time i use it once it's necessary people get 
then this the high frequency because you know we we boosted um, a lot of the highs during the EQ so there might be a sound a time when uh, maybe a crash or a samba will hit tss, and due to those places are already already high in high frequencies and we've boosted the EQ in the high frequency it might get too loud so I'm taking this down like a little bit in case any sound goes past the high threshold then the EQ will just dock it down a little bit you see the reason why we use um, dynamic EQ then lastly most times I don't do this but I just had to use a last EQ as everything is now done now I want to cut away like uh, around 27 hertz nothing important happens in from 27 hertz down because the audible frequency your ear hears is, for, is from 20 most of us cannot even hear 20 hertz from 20 hertz to around 20k hertz so if I solo that, that frequency that I cut away you, you might not even hear anything even with your with your headset on let me play and now you see now having that place on you might, you, you, you might say yes I can't hear anything but once you start doing the last stuff which is your limiter your limiter boosts everything so now those frequencies will now start getting audible and audible and since they're not important they're going to muddy up your sound so it's always important to do this sometimes but if it's a club banger that is boogie, 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 just leave it because every energy is needed so you do your sounds with understanding so now this is the spice the spice of everything that makes everything loud this is the spice the bata bata the chairman that makes everything sound loud because once it's loud your ear thinks it's better so we have to get it loud and loud enough so i'm using and normally i have i have this meter called um, yulin loudness this is one of the best you can download it online for free one of the best analyzers that can tell you how loud your sound is but for the sake of space you know i, I have two screens i use two screens so but for the sake of this tutorial i'm using one because my Recorder can record the two screens at the same time. So putting this guy here is going to block my space So that's why I wasn't showing this guy, but it's always good to do your Limiting or your maximizing with an analyzer. So I'm going to be using the analyzer given to me by Ozone I'm going to be using this guy and these are numbers I'm going to be showing and I'm using a particular Type called short term. There are there is RMS. There is blah blah blah. But I like to use short term because that's the one I understand so much. And I've analyzed professional sound. I just put it on here and be looking at the loudness peak here using short term. Then I now know the range my loudness should fall in. Understand? So I'm using a. It has different types of different modes, but I'm using the transient. Since you're going to be having so much punch and you know this is Afrobeat, so Afrobeats are normally normally have transient sound, sounds that you know that have knocks. So once you get that peak, it has the transient. So you don't want to lose that transient. But if you if you use like classic modern, they might have like almost like they'll treat your song like maybe some of these foreign songs. And it doesn't really make an Afrobeat sound good. So, if you use um, if you use far filter, I guess you should use dynamic, dynamic because it gives. Or you can use punchy, depending on if you want your sound to be punchy. But I have different. I have a lot of plugins that I use, but I prefer using this guy for my mastering because it's just you load your plugins direct into the into one interface instead of loading your mixer. So now this is it. This is the maximizer. Now, first of all, I'm giving my ceiling a minus zero point. I don't give you like a zero because um, once you start exporting, exporting your your sound to MP3, MP3 is like the lowest form of audio file. You understand? So they get they have a lot of um, conversions that happen, and it loses a lot of quality. And sometimes it might go past this ceiling. 
during the conversion and sometimes when you play it in some sounds it gets distorted so some people go like minus 0 0.2 some people even go like minus 1 you no know, but i like to keep it like very close like minus 0 0.1 so that i don't get to zero then the next thing i start doing is i'm going to reset this guy i'll now select my threshold so when I see like the loudness, this is the input, the sound that is coming into the co the maximizer. Now this is the output what is giving out. So you're gonna see that this one is gonna be lesser than this. Then I'm looking at the short term. I'm looking at around minus seven to eight point two. So within that range, you get like an Afrobeat kind of loudness because every genre has this kind of loudness. They have minus 14, minus 9, minus 10. But Afrobeats is usually loud. We like to have it loud. Man, we like it loud. So that's why even my, some people get to minus, minus 5. That's quite too loud. So I'm going to be doing this guy in front of you now. So you now listen. Oh my God. This guy is still so loud. People get your talent oh. Many don't die with the talent oh, oh, oh. Not be who do pass you Not time and chance I they pray to Baba God oh, oh, oh. You will give me the contact oh. We go change my destiny oh. Baba give me the contact oh. We go elevate in my destiny oh. Only will give me the contact oh. I do wait for your update you. Baba give me the contact you. As, you as, as I was doing this You watch that this guy was getting Close to He was having Minus 7 point something And within the range of minus 7 point And minus 9 So that difference is showing, is showing us That we, we still maintain our dynamics Like our transients are still there That's why I'm using the transient so we don't flatten everything and make everything like flat. Pew. No, I still want it to remain dynamic and groovy. Understand why we are getting that loud? Most times, getting excessively loud is not the right way to go. So now that is it. I'm going to bypass and bring it in. So please, at this point, I, I believe that most of you should have subscribed. I need all the subscribers on YouTube right now. Yeah, just help up the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's just it. But if you, if you still, I, I have a case where um, some people hit me up for private tutorials or in-depth, more in-depth tutorials, which I also deliver to them at a very, very, very affordable price. You know, so well, that's the way you have to get help me back for giving you value now, now, now. <laughs> so, but that, by the way. You just hit me up on my numbers on WhatsApp, then we could talk. I could send you a mastered project, as in the fired data, where I also give you videos on how you do that just for a very giveaway price. So just hit me up, hit me up, hit me up. So that's just, I'm going to bypass this. Now I'm bringing it back so you feel what, how far we've gone. So this is it. People get your talent, With the talent, oh, oh, oh. No be who do pass you Time and chance I they pray to Baba God oh, oh, oh. You will give me the contact oh. We go change my destiny oh. Baba give me the contact So guys that was it So like, subscribe Turn on the notification button Hit me up on my social media handle So we could interact, comment do everything for the boy you know that's an encouragement for me to keep giving out stuff when i see reactions and people loving the stuff i do i know that i'm doing the right thing and i will get excess ginger to do more so that's it so see you next time keep keep doing everything bye bye <laughs>